40 Interview Questions for a Computer System Validation, CSV, Specialist Role. If you're interested in receiving a comprehensive CSV interview questions and answers document, please write interested in the comment section. What is Computer System Validation, CSV? CSV ensures that computer systems perform as intended and comply with regulatory requirements. It's a process of verifying and documenting that systems meet predefined specifications. This is critical in industries like pharmaceuticals, where data integrity is paramount. It ensures both compliance and product safety. Why is CSV important in regulated industries? CSV ensures that computer systems produce accurate, reliable, and consistent results. In industries like pharmaceuticals, regulatory bodies like the FDA require CSV to guarantee data integrity and product quality. Without proper validation, errors could lead to regulatory penalties or even harm to patients. It also helps avoid production delays and costly recalls. What regulatory bodies govern CSV in the pharmaceutical industry? Common regulatory bodies include the FDA, US, EMA, Europe, and EDQM, Europe. These agencies have guidelines such as 21 CFR Part 11 and Annex 11. These regulations dictate how electronic records and signatures must be handled. The goal is to ensure that computerized systems are secure, reliable, and compliant. What are GXP guidelines? GXP stands for Good Practice Guidelines, which include Good Manufacturing Practice, GMP, Good Laboratory Practice, GLP, and Good Clinical Practice, GCP. These guidelines ensure product quality, safety, and integrity in life sciences industries. CSV supports GXB by ensuring systems used in these processes are validated and compliant. They are crucial for maintaining compliance with industry standards. What is 21 CFR Part 11? 21 CFR Part 11 is an FDA regulation that outlines the requirements for electronic records and electronic signatures in the pharmaceutical industry. It ensures data integrity, security, and traceability in computer systems. Compliance with 21 CFR Part 11 ensures that electronic data is as trustworthy as paper records. It also enables the use of electronic signatures in place of handwritten ones. What is the difference between verification and validation? Verification checks whether the system is built correctly according to specifications, while validation ensures the system meets the needs of the end user. Verification answers, are we building the system right? And validation answers, are we building the right system? Both are important in the CSV process. Validation is critical in regulated industries to meet compliance requirements. Can you explain what good automated manufacturing practice, GMP, is? GMP is a set of guidelines for validating automated systems in regulated industries, like pharmaceuticals. It provides a risk-based approach to CSV, focusing on ensuring that systems are fit for their intended use. The guidelines help streamline the validation process and ensure compliance. It's widely accepted by regulatory bodies worldwide. What are the key phases of a typical CSV process? The key phases include planning, specification, testing, and reporting. First, you plan and define system requirements, then write specifications. Testing verifies that the system meets these specifications and finally, reporting documents the entire process. Each phase ensures the system works as intended and meets regulatory requirements. What is the role of a CSV specialist? A CSV specialist ensures that computer systems used in regulated environments are compliant with industry standards and regulations. They participate in all phases of system validation, from writing validation protocols to executing tests. Their role is crucial in ensuring data integrity, system functionality, and regulatory compliance. They also collaborate with other departments to maintain validation processes. What is a validation plan? A validation plan is a document outlining the strategy, resources, and activities for the validation of a system. It includes the scope, objectives, and responsibilities of the validation project. It serves as a roadmap to ensure all aspects of validation are covered. The plan is critical for ensuring that the system complies with regulatory standards. What is risk-based validation and why is it important? Risk-based validation focuses on identifying and mitigating risks associated with computer systems, especially those affecting product quality and patient safety. It helps prioritize validation efforts on high-risk areas. This ensures efficient use of resources while maintaining compliance. 
It also aligns with industry guidelines like GMP. What is the difference between prospective, concurrent, and retrospective validation? Prospective validation is performed before the system is released for use. Concurrent validation is performed during routine operation. Retrospective validation is done after a system is already in use to ensure it meets current standards. Prospective validation is the most common in CSV. What are installation qualification, IQ, operational qualification, OQ, and performance qualification, PQ? IQ ensures that the system is installed correctly according to manufacturer specifications. OQ verifies that the system operates as intended in its operating environment. PQ confirms that the system performs consistently and reliably in real-world conditions. Together, these qualifications demonstrate that the system meets its intended use. What is a validation protocol, and what does it include? A validation protocol is a detailed document outlining the tests and acceptance criteria for system validation. It includes the objectives, test procedures, and expected outcomes. The protocol ensures that each aspect of a system is thoroughly tested. It's critical for ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements. What is a traceability matrix? A traceability matrix is a document that links user requirements to validation tests. It ensures that all system requirements have been tested and verified. The matrix provides an audit trail that demonstrates system compliance. It's a key component in CSV documentation. How do you determine which systems need validation? Systems that impact product quality, patient safety, or data integrity need validation. This includes manufacturing systems, laboratory equipment, and data management systems. A risk-based approach is often used to prioritize validation efforts. Systems not affecting these areas may not need the same level of validation. What is Part 11 compliance, and how do you ensure it? Part 11 compliance ensures that electronic records and signatures are trustworthy and reliable. To ensure compliance, the system must have audit trails, access controls, and secure data storage. Validation processes should document that the system meets these requirements. Regular audits and monitoring are also part of maintaining compliance. How would you handle deviations found during validation? Deviations must be documented and assessed to determine their impact on system functionality and compliance. A root cause analysis is conducted to identify the cause of the deviation. Corrective actions are then taken, and the system is retested to ensure the issue is resolved. All actions are documented in a deviation report. How do you ensure data integrity in a computer system? Data integrity is ensured by implementing controls like audit trails, user access management, and data encryption. Validation tests ensure that data is accurate, complete, and unaltered. Regular audits and monitoring also help maintain data integrity. It's crucial to follow regulatory guidelines like 21 CFR Part 11. What is an audit trail and why is it important? An audit trail is a record of all changes made to a system or data. It includes information like who made the change, when it was made, and what the change was. Audit trails are important for ensuring data integrity and traceability. They're required for compliance with regulations like 21 CFR Part 11. Can you explain how you validate a Laboratory Information Management System, LMS? Validating a LIMS involves ensuring that it meets regulatory requirements and functions, as intended. This includes creating validation plans, writing specifications, and performing tests to confirm system functionality. It's essential to document all validation activities to ensure compliance with GXB and 21 CFR Part 11. Regular audits are also conducted to maintain system integrity. What are the key differences between validating cloud-based systems and on-premises systems? Cloud-based systems require additional considerations like data security, access controls, and vendor management. The responsibility for validation may be shared with the cloud provider. On-premises systems offer more control but require more internal resources for maintenance and validation. Both must comply with regulatory requirements. How do you validate computerized systems for clinical trials? Validation of clinical trial systems ensures that patient data is accurate and secure. Systems must comply with GCP guidelines and 21 CFR Part 11. The validation process involves creating validation plans, conducting tests, and ensuring audit trails. 
Proper documentation is critical for maintaining compliance with regulatory bodies. How do you handle validation for a system upgrade? System upgrades require revalidation to ensure that changes don't affect compliance or system performance. A risk assessment is conducted to determine the extent of validation needed. Testing is performed to verify that the system still meets its requirements. Documentation is updated to reflect the changes. What is a vendor audit and why is it important in CSV? A vendor audit evaluates the vendor's ability to meet regulatory and quality requirements for computerized systems. It ensures that the vendor follows industry standards for system development and maintenance. Audits help verify that systems purchased from third-party vendors can be validated. It's essential for maintaining compliance and minimizing risk. What is continuous validation and how do you implement it? Continuous validation involves regularly monitoring systems to ensure they maintain compliance throughout their life cycle. This includes periodic testing, audits, and system updates. Changes to the system are assessed for their impact on validation status. Continuous validation is essential for systems in regulated environments. How do you ensure compliance with Annex 11? Annex 11 is the European counterpart to 21 CFR Part 11, focusing on computerized systems in the pharmaceutical industry. To ensure compliance, you need to validate systems, implement audit trails, and maintain data integrity. You must also have a robust change control process and periodic system reviews. Training and documentation are essential to meet the guidelines. What is periodic review in CSV and why is it important? Periodic review involves regularly evaluating validated systems to ensure they continue to meet regulatory requirements and function as intended. Reviews help identify potential issues before they lead to noncompliance. This is essential for maintaining validated status throughout the system's life cycle. It also ensures ongoing compliance with regulations like 21 CFR Part 11. How do you handle changes to a validated system? Change to a validated system require a controlled change management process. A risk assessment is conducted to determine the impact of the change on system functionality and compliance. Revalidation may be required, depending on the extent of the change. All changes and their validation must be documented to maintain compliance. What is a user requirement specification, URS, and why is it important? A URS is a document that defines the system's functional and operational requirements from the user's perspective. It serves as the foundation for system design, testing, and validation. It's crucial because it ensures that the system will meet the needs of the users and comply with regulatory requirements. A well-written URS helps streamline the validation process. What is retrospective validation and when would you use it? Retrospective validation is performed on systems that are already in use, but were not validated at the time of implementation. It's often used when regulatory requirements change or when systems are repurposed for new functions. The process involves reviewing historical data to ensure the system meets current standards. It's less common than prospective validation, but still important in some cases. How do you validate electronic signatures in a system? Electronic signatures must meet the requirements of 21 CFR Part 11 or Annex 11, ensuring they are secure, reliable, and traceable. Validation involves testing the system's ability to capture, store, and protect electronic signatures. The system must also provide audit trails for each signature. Proper documentation of the validation process is essential for compliance. What is a data migration plan and how do you validate it? A data migration plan outlines how data will be transferred from one system to another, ensuring that data integrity is maintained. Validation involves testing to ensure that data is accurately and completely transferred. A risk assessment is often conducted to identify any potential issues during the migration process. Proper documentation is key to ensuring compliance. What are system qualification protocols and why are they important? System qualification protocols are documents that outline the testing procedures for installation qualification, IQ, operational qualification, OQ, and performance qualification, PQ. These protocols ensure that the system is installed correctly, operates as intended, and performs consistently in real-world conditions. They are essential for demonstrating system compliance with regulatory requirements. Proper execution and documentation of these protocols are critical for system validation.
What is an what? impact assessment in the context of system changes? An impact assessment evaluates the effect of a change on the system's functionality, compliance, and validation status. It's used to determine the level of testing and validation required for the change. The goal is to identify and mitigate any risks associated with a change. Documentation of the impact assessment is crucial for maintaining compliance. How do you validate a cloud-based system for GXP compliance? Validating a cloud-based system for GXP compliance involves ensuring that the cloud provider meets regulatory requirements for data integrity, security, and availability. It's essential to validate that the system performs as expected in the cloud environment. A risk assessment and periodic audits of the cloud provider are necessary. Vendor qualification is also a key part of this process. How would you validate an automated manufacturing system? Validating an automated manufacturing system involves creating validation protocols that test system functionality, performance, and compliance with GMP. It's crucial to validate all system components, including software, hardware, and interfaces. Testing includes IQ, OQ, and PQ to ensure the system meets operational and regulatory requirements. Proper documentation and periodic reviews are essential for maintaining validated status. How do you ensure data security in a validated system? Data security is ensured by implementing access controls, encryption, and audit trails. Validation tests confirm that these security measures are functioning as intended. Regular audits and monitoring help identify any potential security risks. Compliance with industry standards like 21 CFR Part 11 is critical for maintaining data security. How do you ensure system validation during disaster recovery? System validation during disaster recovery involves testing backup systems to ensure they can take over in case of failure. It's essential to validate that data integrity and system functionality are maintained during and after a disaster. Regular disaster recovery drills and audits are part of the validation process. Documentation is critical for demonstrating compliance with regulatory requirements. What is validation lifecycle management and why is it important? Validation lifecycle management involves maintaining the validated state of a system throughout its entire life cycle. This includes initial validation, periodic reviews, and revalidation after system changes. It ensures that the system continues to meet regulatory requirements and functions as intended. Effective lifecycle management is crucial for maintaining compliance in regulated industries. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the content helpful and informative. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content. Feel free to leave any questions or feedback in the comments below.